Hello, this is Dr. Gardner. We're going to be looking at a brief tutorial here on how to set up an Excel spreadsheet uh, for a polyprotic acid system. I chose a triprotic acid as phosphoric acid in order to show uh, how to set up the Excel spreadsheet. And what you can see here is we have the first ionization of the first proton phos from phosphoric acid producing dihydrogen phosphate and my hydrogen cation cation or my hydronium ions in a water-based solution and then I have dihydrogen phosphate going through the second ionization step to produce uh, the hydrogen phosphate ion and the hydronium ion and then I have the third ionization step which is the uh, hydrogen phosphate ionizing to produce phosphate ions and my hydronium ions. So I get hydronium ions from all three of these sources. To prevent confusion, I've used ETS for the change in concentrations for their first equilibrium process for the variable and Y for the dihydrogen phosphate ionization equilibrium process and Z for the hydrogen phosphate equilibrium process. So I have a contribution of the hydronium ions in solution from ETS, Y, and Z for all three possible acidic protons and their ionization processes from this triprotic acid. We're also going to find the concentration of all species in solution, including the initial phosphoric acid. Now, the initial phosphoric acid's formal concentration was 5 times 10 to the negative fifth uh, molarity, but a little bit of that ionizes, so I'm going to subtract ETS from it. We're going to go ahead and find the concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate, whose value will be equal to ETS, the hydrogen phosphate ion, which is value is equal to Y, and we're going to go ahead and look at the phosphate ion whose concentration is equal to Z. Now I have to be careful though because I actually will have some of the uh, the dihydrogen phosphate will be ionizing to produce the hydrogen phosphate ion. So I will have to take um, my concentration of ETS for dihydrogen phosphate and subtract my value for uh, Y to determine this. And in fact, uh, just for a brief correction here, this should actually be ETS minus Y. And then once I produce my hydrogen phosphate, some of the hydrogen phosphate will undergo uh, ionization to produce uh, phosphate ion in, in Z's quantity. And so actually if I put in Y minus Z here, that would represent better what's going on with respect to each of my equilibrium processes. So, now that I've identified each of these steps in this equilibrium process, well, we're going to have to solve for our X, Y, and Z values. Now, I've already given some reference values, but let's see how I found these. So first of all, let's say I take one of my uh, ionization processes and write an equilibrium expression. Let's do that for the phosphoric acid, so I'm going to use X as my variable. Okay, so if we write this, we're going to have your Ka1 value for the first ionization step is equal to X squared over my formal concentration of the molecular form of the phosphoric acid minus that. So that's just my equilibrium expression that's written out. Now I'm going to go ahead and write this in the form of a quadratic equation. To do so, I multiply both sides uh, by F minus X. So I went ahead and have uh, the Ka1 value times the formal concentration of the original phosphoric acid and then minus uh, my Ka value times X. Now that's all equal to x squared. Now I went ahead and uh, subtracted x squared from both sides of the equation and said equal to zero. Okay, and then I divided both sides by a minus one and so I rearranged to put it in the quadratic equation form. So I have x squared plus Ka times x minus your Ka1 value times the formal concentration equals zero. So you'll notice my A value from the quadratic is just a one. My B value is my Ka1 uh, constant for the first ionization process and my C value is Ka1 times the formal concentration of the acid. Now recognizing that I can use my spreadsheet to do a lot of the work for me with each of these uh, quadratic equation problems. So I'm going to set up three quadratic equation solutions. So to set up this solution I'm going to go ahead and say well I need a Ka1 value for phosphoric acid. So I look up that value and it's going to be 0.00711. I look up the initial concentration from the problem I'm working of the phosphoric acid. I told you that was 5 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. Now since we've already solved for the quadratic equation down here I know what my solution would be for A, B, and C with respect to my Ka values as well as my formal concentrations. So I went ahead and put in A is equal to 1, B is going to be equal to uh, my 
Ka1, the first ionization constant for this weak acid. And then my C value, if you recall, was going to be my formal concentration of the phosphoric acid times my Ka1 value. Now the phosphoric acid here I've put as a generic weak acid uh, formula of HA for that, but you could write in H3PO4. That would be that initial concentration. So now I have value for A, B, and C with respect to the quadratic equation formula. Uh, we can go ahead and, and set up to solve for this. So here I've just referenced A, B, and C again. And then I solve for S with a plus in the term as well as S with a minus in the term so that I can solve for the quadratic equation with both possible values of ets. Now I can't have a negative concentration, so I know the second value for ets isn't true, so I would use this first value of 4.97 times 10 to the negative fifth uh, for my future calculations. Okay. Now I do the same type of calculation uh, for each of the steps of the ionization process. So for the, the second proton in this triprotic acid, I'm going to use Ys, right? So I go ahead and set up the quadratic equation and I solve for uh, A, B, and C in the quadratic equation form. So I get 1, 6.34 uh, times 10 to the negative eighth is my Ka2 value, right? So that's going to be my B value. My C value would be my uh, initial concentration. Now be careful, this initial concentration is going to be your et solution from the first step. So I had solved previously under ETS, ETS for my concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate before it undergoes ionization is a 4.97 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so that I put that in for my net concentration, formal concentration. And then as I'm looking at that value for my initial concentration there, I can go ahead and solve for the quadratic equation. And my quadratic equation in this case will give me uh, y values of 1.74 times 10 to the negative 6 and a negative 1.81 times 10 to the negative 6. I can't have a negative concentration, so my y value will be the 1.74 times 10 to the negative 6. And then I can do for the third ionization process for that third proton, my Ka3 value, I can look up that value for phosphoric acid, it's 4.22 times 10 to the negative 13th. Okay, I can go ahead and, and set up the equilibrium expression and set that into a quadratic formula just like I had done before down here. I can go ahead and find A is still 1, B is going to be my K3 value, right? So the 4.22 uh, times 10 to the negative 13th, and C is going to be my uh, my formal concentration. Now it's a formal concentration I'm beginning with before ionization of the hydrogen phosphate ion. So that was the 1.74 times 10 uh, to the negative sixth that I had solved for previously for y. Okay, and then I need to multiply that by my Ka value of 4.22 times 10 to the negative 13th to get my C value. I solve for the uh, the z value using quadratic equation, there's two possible solutions. I'm going to get a positive concentration, so I use 8.57 uh, times 10 to the negative 10th. Okay, so now I have solved three quadratic equation problems to determine the concentrations of each of my species in solution. I'm almost done. What I have to realize now is that if I look at the uh, phosphoric acid concentration, it was just my formal concentration I begin with. Okay, minus ETS. Now, we noticed that uh, the phosphoric acid was a strong enough acid that we ended up with having a Ka value that was somewhat large. So we end up with quite a bit of ionization. So we ended up with taking your value for ETS that you saw for, subtracting that from the value of the formal concentration to begin with. We find that the phosphoric acid in this solution was only present as 3.468 times 10 to the negative seventh um, molarity. And then the dihydrogen phosphate ion, which was my formal concentration was ETS, but then some of it ionizes, so I subtract Y from the second ionization step, would give me a formal concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate of 4.79, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth, and then I have the dihydrogen phosphate undergoing some ionization, so the value for the for the dihydrogen phosphate we solve for. The hydrogen phosphate will be my value for Y that I solve for and subtracting Z for its ionization. So I end up with 1.742 times 10 to the negative sixth for the concentration of the hydrogen phosphate ion. And then if I look at the phosphate ion, well, I solve for Z, that's going to be my last ionization step. So its concentration is 8.574 times 10 to the negative tenth. 
okay? And then I have to realize that th these are also my values uh, for the hydrogen ion concentration contribution from the first pro uh, ionization step, the second ionization step, and the third ionization step. So if I add up my values for x, y, and z here, I'll end up finding all of those concentrations add up to the overall concentration of hydronium ions in solution from all the ionization steps. So that's how I would set this up to solve for uh, my pH of solution. I could take the negative logarithm of this to find the pH of the solution and then I would be uh, ready to report the concentration of every species in solution. So hopefully you found that helpful to see how we could set up uh, a spreadsheet to solve this type of problem.